made a small mistake and slept with my boss, but my husband decided to get revenge. I couldn't resist spending the night with my boss. Karma got me back hard. Hey, everyone, I never thought I'd end up in this mess, but here I am, dealing with the fallout of a huge mistake. I'm Aaliyah, 32 years old, married to my high school sweetheart, Mark, who is also a 32-year-old man. We've been married for six years and we've got twin boys, Jamie and Vince, who are seven. Mark and I met in high school. Mark was like the golden boy. He aced his classes, rocked it on the football field as the star quarterback, and even snagged the valedictorian spot. Everyone loved him. He was that guy who just seemed to have it all. Then there was me. I was just your average Joe, not as flashy or popular as Mark. While he effortlessly stole the spotlight, I sort of blended into the background, doing my own thing without much fuss. So when Mark approached me in the school hallways, I was skeptical. I mean, this guy had it all, right? Why would he be interested in someone like me? I half expected it to be some mean joke, a prank pulled by him and his buddies to make fun of the quiet kid. But as time went on, I realized Mark was for real. He kept being nice to me, showing genuine interest. And it slowly dawned on me that maybe, just maybe, he saw something in me worth getting to know. After taking the leap and letting Mark get to know me in high school, things couldn't have turned out better. We've been together ever since, from those awkward teenage years to now, navigating adulthood in our 30s. While we've only been officially married for six years, our bond goes way back to those high school days. Uh, Mark's career in real estate has been nothing short of spectacular. His natural charisma and charm have always set him apart, making it easy for him to excel in any endeavor he pursued. It's no surprise that he's become one of the biggest names in the industry, commanding respect and admiration wherever he goes. His success has translated into financial prosperity for us, providing a very comfortable life for our family. But beyond his professional achievements, it's Mark's role as a father that truly shines. Our boys, Jamie and Vince, absolutely adore him. He's their biggest hero, their source of inspiration and the center of their world. Watching them interact with him fills my heart with joy, knowing that they have such an incredible role model to look up to. Looking back, seeing how much Jamie and Vince idolized their dad was heartwarming, but it was also tough knowing they'd always pick him over me. It was just natural, I guess, for kids to see their dad as the superhero of the family. As for my job, it wasn't anything fancy. I clocked in at an office every day, doing the usual nine to five grind, it wasn't glamorous, but it was a job, so I couldn't complain too much. And these things weren't the only things getting me down. Despite putting in the effort, I kept getting passed over for promotions. It was frustrating as heck, and it felt like no matter what I did, I was stuck in this rut. It was like I was running on a treadmill, putting in all this effort but never getting anywhere. And let me tell you, it was really starting to get to me. When it came to paying the bills, Mark handled about 80% of the load since he made way more money than I did. I chipped in with around 20%, which seemed fair given our income gap. Because Mark was often out for work, he only tackled about 30% of the chores at home. That left me with the lion's share, doing about 70% of the household tasks to keep things running smoothly. I was beyond frustrated at work because no matter what I did, I kept getting passed over for promotions. It felt like a slap in the face to see colleagues, some of whom I had more experience than move up the ladder while I remained stuck in the same position. And what made it even more infuriating was that I knew exactly why I was being overlooked. It all boiled down to a clash I had with my old boss ages ago, long before they became my superior. It was a simple altercation, but it seemed to have left a lasting mark on them. From that moment on, it felt like they had it out for me refusing to acknowledge my hard work and dedication. So you can imagine my excitement when I heard the news that our boss was on their way out and a new one was stepping in. It felt like a glimmer of hope, a chance for a fresh start where my efforts might finally be recognized and rewarded. I had reached a breaking point at work and seriously contemplated quitting altogether. With Mark's substantial earnings, the idea of becoming a full-time stay-at-home mom seemed increasingly appealing. But just as I was on the brink of making a major life decision, everything changed with the arrival of our new boss. Hope flickered back to life within me as I dared to believe that this fresh leadership might finally recognize and reward my hard work. So I decided to stay put, holding on to the possibility of a brighter future within the company. 
However, my optimism quickly turned to dismay when I realized that our new boss was far from the savior I had hoped for. Instead of a fair and respectful leader, he revealed himself to be a pervert with a penchant for inappropriate behavior. His constant catcalling and overly friendly demeanor towards me left me feeling uncomfortable and downright disgusted, to be honest. The most frustrating part of it all was feeling powerless to speak out against his inappropriate behavior. As the head of the branch and my direct supervisor, reporting him to HR seemed futile, as though I was shouting into the void with no hope of being heard or taken seriously. The idea of getting that promotion consumed me. It felt like my ticket to prove myself, to show that I was worth something. I felt like I was always playing catch up to Mark, like he was way out of my league. Getting that promotion would have leveled the playing field a bit, you know? But at the same time, it made me feel pretty crappy about myself. Like, why did I have to feel so inferior all the time? I never talked to Mark about it because he was always busy, and I didn't want to bother him with my problems. So I went all in on trying to suck up to my boss. It wasn't exactly my proudest moment, but I figured it was worth it if it meant getting that promotion. I wanted it so bad, it even invaded my dreams at night. Yeah, I know, kind of sad, right? But that's how desperate I was. There was buzz around the office about my boss's upcoming birthday party. He'd invited everyone, including me, emphasizing that attendance wasn't mandatory but would be appreciated. It struck me that he must have been feeling pretty lonely, being unmarried and all. Anyway, I wasn't sure about going at first, but when I got home and mentioned it to Mark, he surprised me by encouraging me to go. Mark, bless his heart, could see that I needed a break from the usual routine. Since I was always knee-deep in household chores, he offered to take over the duties for the next day so I could attend the party stress-free. It was a sweet gesture and it meant a lot to me, but I couldn't help feeling a bit flustered by the short notice. I mean, my boss only gave us a day or two heads up, which felt kinda rushed if you ask me. Still, with Mark's support and a break from chores in sight, I decided to seize the opportunity and RSVP'd for the party. I RSVP'd for the party and prepared for an evening of celebration. The morning at work passed like any other day, but I couldn't shake off the anticipation of the upcoming event. I even took the time to pick out a small gift for my boss, hoping it might earn me some brownie points in my quest for that elusive promotion. When I presented it to him, he seemed pleased, though his usual unsettling demeanor lingered. Work continued without incident, with my boss even going out of his way to bring me lunch and coffee, a gesture that left me feeling a bit uncomfortable, given his position of authority. Nevertheless, I soldiered on, determined not to let his behavior dampen my spirits. As the day wore on and evening approached, it was time to wrap up work and prepare for the party. I headed home, eager to change into something more festive before heading to my boss's house for the festivities. To my surprise and delight, Mark had taken care of everything at home, leaving me free to focus on getting ready for the evening ahead. His thoughtfulness touched my heart, and I couldn't help but feel grateful for such a supportive partner. With a renewed sense of confidence, I put in a little extra effort into my appearance, wanting to look my best for the occasion. Then, with a quick goodbye to Mark and the kids, I headed off to the party, ready to mingle and enjoy the evening. Of course, I didn't enjoy it. If Oli I had known earlier, I would have never gone to the party. The party was a blast. We had cake, drinks, and a whole lot of fun. It was one of those gatherings where everyone was having a great time, enjoying each other's company and celebrating together. Our boss might have been a creep, but he was also a really good boss and everyone liked him a bit for that and also a party just has a way of uplifting you. As the party wound down, my boss asked if I could stick around and help him clean up. Looking back, it should have set off alarm bells, but I was too focused on scoring that promotion to see the red flags. So, I agreed, thinking it'd show him how dedicated I was. Uh, while everyone else headed home, I stayed behind to lend a hand. We tidied up the place, putting things back in order after the festivities. It seemed harmless enough at the time, but little did I know it was the start of something much more unsettling. Suddenly, as I bent down to pick something up, my boss's hands grabbed me from behind. My immediate reaction was to assert myself and firmly tell him to keep his hands to himself. I made it clear that if he couldn't respect my boundaries, I would leave. In response, he offered a half-hearted apology before launching into a ludicrous monologue about how he had always harbored feelings for me. 
He professed his supposed love and expressed his regret that I was already married. It was both flattering and infuriating at the same time. But I quickly shut down his advances, reminding him firmly of my marital status and firmly rejecting his advances. However, my boss then played his trump card, revealing that he knew how much I desired that promotion. He shamelessly propositioned me, suggesting that if I were to spend just one night with him, he would not only grant me the promotion I longed for, but also promise further advancements in my career, including the possibility of managing another branch in the city. My boss's behavior left me furious and filled with regret. I loathed him more than ever in that moment. If I could turn back time, I'd steer clear of that mess. But hey, no time machines, right? Despite my anger, I couldn't deny feeling tempted by his offer. The thought of finally getting the promotion I'd been busting my butt for was hard to resist. But deep down, I knew giving in would mean selling out my values and everything I stand for. Despite considering my husband and kids, I still caved to the temptation. Sure, my boss was a creep, but he was also good looking, which didn't make things any easier. Plus, I wanted that promotion so badly. In that moment, all I could think about was the idea that what my husband didn't know wouldn't hurt him. He'd never find out about this one night with my boss, and then I could just go back to my normal life. I'd finally get that promotion I'd been dreaming of, and I'd be able to stand tall beside my husband at events without feeling inferior. That thought was the only thing on my mind, so I agreed. My boss practically jumped for joy when I agreed. The guy was delusional. So yeah, I guess I was a bit tipsy because next thing I knew, he whisked me off to his room without even bothering to lock the door. Talk about a rookie mistake. But little did I know that oversight would come back to bite us in the end. Or should I say it would become my downfall since I ended up being the scapegoat in the situation. Anyway, things escalated pretty quickly once we were in his room. Clothes flew off, lips locked, and before I knew it, we were going at it like a couple of sex-crazed maniacs. It was exhilarating in the moment, I won't lie. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling of regret gnawing at me. I loved my husband to bits, and the thought of him catching us in the act haunted me. But I pushed those thoughts aside, telling myself there was no way he'd ever find out. So I let myself get lost in the moment, reasoning that it was just a one-time thing and that I needed that promotion more than anything. I should have seen it coming, really. My boss was a total idiot, and I can't even begin to express how much I despised him in that moment. He had the nerve to suddenly change his tune and demand that I spend the night with him. I mean, who did he think he was? Infuriated, I confronted him, demanding to know why he would even suggest such a thing. But instead of backing down, he resorted to threats, insisting that if I wanted that promotion, I had no choice but to comply. I wanted nothing more than to storm out of there with my dignity intact. But then I remembered that I had already slept with him, and walking away now would mean all my efforts would have been for nothing. So reluctantly, I resigned myself to the situation and agreed to spend the night. To cover my tracks, I quickly fired off a text to my husband, claiming I was too drunk to drive and would be crashing at my best friend's place. Thankfully, she worked with me so she could back up my story, and the fact that she couldn't drive herself made it all the more believable. It was a nightmarish experience that left me feeling utterly disgusted with myself and seething with anger. My stupid as hell treated me like some sort of housemaid, making me clean alongside him, cook his dinner, and fulfill his desires repeatedly. Every moment was a painful reminder of how low I had sunk in my desperation for that promotion. As I went through the motions, I couldn't shake the overwhelming sense of sorrow and guilt that gnawed at me, especially when I thought about my husband. He hadn't even responded to my text, and I couldn't bring myself to check if he had even seen it. The thought of him, oblivious to what was happening, broke my heart. Finally, morning came and my boss mercifully granted me the day off. I practically sprinted out of there, desperate to rid myself of his presence and the lingering stench of shame. All I wanted was to go home, take a long, hot bath, and scrub away every trace of him from my skin. As I made my way back, I couldn't help but wonder if my husband would be home. I wondered if he would be able to tell from my face or body language that I had cheated on him. I knew the kids would be in school by now and I was thankful for that. I just wanted to go home then bath and then nap for some time. I, said that. I felt like the weight of the world was crushing me with shame. I wanted to tell my husband everything, but I knew it would be game over for our marriage in a heartbeat. He had zero tolerance for cheating. 
plain and simple. Plus, when I really thought about it, the reason I cheated seemed pretty dumb. Imagine trying to explain to your husband that you messed up because you wanted a stupid promotion. It just sounded ridiculous. So I kept my mouth shut, hoping I could somehow make things right without blowing everything up. When I finally made it home, I breathed a sigh of relief to find my husband still at work. It might sound silly, but I was overwhelmed with shame and embarrassment. I couldn't shake the feeling that my guilt was written all over my face and in every movement of my body. I've always been one of those people who believes their secrets are written on their forehead in invisible ink, especially after doing something as stupid as cheating. Plus, my husband was pretty perceptive. Even if he didn't automatically jump to the conclusion that I had cheated, he definitely sensed that something was off. And knowing him, he wouldn't let it go until I spilled the beans. So I wasted no time in retreating to the hot tub and scrubbing myself raw in the shower. I scrubbed until my skin felt raw, as if trying to wash away the shame and regret that clung to me like a second skin. All I wanted was to forget about that sleazy boss of mine and move on from this nightmare. After my shower, I slumped in front of the TV, my mind buzzing with guilt and regret. The idea of quitting my job kept nagging at me. My boss had totally screwed me over and I felt like crap for falling for it. I tossed around the idea of becoming a stay-at-home mom or finding a new gig. The promotion didn't even matter to me anymore. All I wanted was to never have to deal with my boss again. But then, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd gone through so much crap to get that promotion. It felt wrong to just walk away from it all. It was a tough call. I hated the thought of profiting from my mistake, but at the same time, I couldn't ignore the fact that I'd gone through hell to get where I was. So I made up my mind. I'd go all out making dinner that night, hoping it would make up for the mess I'd gotten myself into. I put my heart into making dinner, cooking up a storm in the kitchen. I made enough food to feed an army and set the table with care, even though I knew my husband had already tidied up the day before. But despite all my efforts, I couldn't shake this restless feeling. When my husband finally got home, his mood was like a storm cloud rolling in. It was written all over his face, like he had a permanent sad expression. I could feel the tension in the air, but I didn't know how to approach him. Even though he seemed distant, I couldn't help but feel this sense of familiarity. We've been through so much together, and I know him better than anyone else. So I gathered up my courage and asked him what was wrong. But he didn't even acknowledge me, like he was deliberately shutting me out. I was at a loss for what to do. All I wanted was for my husband to come home, wrap me in his arms, and help me make sense of everything I'd been through. Instead, he was angry and distant, shutting me out when I tried to talk to him. Feeling defeated, I resigned myself to eating dinner alone. It wasn't until I sat down to eat that I realized something was off. I hadn't even thought about the kids since my husband had come home. Normally, he picks them up from school, but with his mood, I hadn't had a chance to ask about them. When I finally mustered the courage to ask, he finally acknowledged me. He told me the kids were at his parents' place, which caught me off guard. We don't usually send them there on school days, especially with classes the next morning. I tried to reason with him, but he brushed off my concerns, insisting he'd pick them up early enough for school. It left me wondering why the rush. We could have easily visited his parents on the weekend, but he refused to give me a straight answer, shutting me out once again. Feeling defeated and desperate to break the ice, I asked my husband to join me for dinner, hoping it might help us reconnect. That's when he finally spoke up, but his question hit me like a ton of bricks. Did I spend the night at my boss's place? I didn't have to say a word. The way I froze, the guilt written all over my face, said it all. It was like my body confessed before I could even open my mouth. My heart sank as I watched my husband's reaction. He looked like he was about to cry and his disappointment was written all over his face. I wanted to ask him how he found out, but he didn't say a word. It felt like the world was crashing down around me. I had hoped that what happened at my boss's place would just fade away, that my husband would never find out. But here I was, faced with his knowledge of what I did. In a daze, my husband got up and went into our room, locking the door behind him, leaving me standing there, feeling completely alone with my guilt. 
I barely slept in the guest room, my mind racing with worry all night. I knew my husband finding out could mean the end of our marriage, and that scared the hell out of me. If only I had come clean to him first, maybe things wouldn't be so messed up now. The next morning, I went through my usual routine, but every action felt heavy with anxiety. I didn't even bother calling into work. Fixing things with my husband was all I could think about. As I brushed my teeth, took a shower and made breakfast, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread. Uh, when my husband finally got back home a couple of hours later, I knew it was time to face the music. He wasted no time and told me he wanted me out of the house. It felt like my whole world was crashing down and I had no idea what to do next. I wish I could tell you every detail of what happened next, but it all happened so fast, like someone hit fast forward. I was crying my eyes out, begging my husband not to end our family. I said sorry a million times, but he wouldn't budge. He told me he'd been thinking all night and if he could forgive me, he would have done it last night. But forgiveness wasn't happening. He said the whole thing cut too deep and he couldn't shake the image of me and my boss. Then he dropped a bomb. My best friend spilled everything. At first, I couldn't believe it. How could she do that to me? But my husband showed me the messages and a video. She claimed she forgot her bag at the party and came back for it. It sounded fishy. Who forgets their bag? She was clearly snooping, knowing our boss was into me. I should have seen through her facade. My husband revealed that my so-called bestie, or rather ex-bestie now, pulled a sneaky move. She claimed she forgot her bag and swung back to my boss's place to grab it, only to overhear some noises from the room. Somehow she managed to discreetly record a video without me or my boss noticing. Uh, honestly, I'm not shocked she slipped into the house unnoticed. The door wasn't exactly bolted shut. But what baffles me is how she pulled off filming without either of us catching on. Guess luck was on her side that day. So that backstabbing snake sent the video to my husband and spilled all the beans. She even made up lies saying my boss had been hitting on me for months, which was total BS. Sure, my boss flirted with me sometimes, but he never made any moves until his damn birthday party. As for my so-called friend, I should have seen it coming. She always had eyes for my husband. I remember at my bachelorette party, she drunkenly said she deserved a man like him, not me. But when I confronted her later, she just laughed it off as her being drunk. Stupidly, I believed her. Well, I had to pack up and leave. My husband was still in shock and I couldn't stay there any longer. I called for an Uber and headed straight to my parents' house. Luckily, they lived nearby, so I didn't have to go far. My husband promised he'd take care of the kids, but I could visit whenever. We agreed to keep each other updated, given the mess we were in. That's how the whole disaster played out. It was chaotic and overwhelming. Weeks passed, and sadly, my husband and kids started adjusting to life without me at home. I made sure to visit them whenever I could, but things were never the same. As soon as I had the chance, I quit my job. I couldn't stand the thought of seeing my sleazy ex-boss ever again. I cut off my so-called friend too. She betrayed me in the worst possible way, and I wanted nothing to do with her anymore. Now, my husband is pushing for a divorce. He's already mentioned sending me the papers and is talking about filing for custody. I can't say I'm surprised. He earns way more than I do, and he has a stable home for the kids. Plus, they're more attached to him. It's a tough situation, and I'm not sure how it'll all turn out, but I am definitely losing out here. I've destroyed my marriage, never got the promotion, and even quit. Broke as hell as my husband was my main source of income, and won't even get custody of my kids. Honestly, I just felt like sharing my story on Reddit because maybe someone out there can learn from my mistakes. Cheating is never worth it, and I've learned that the hard way. And if my sleazy ex-boss ever comes across this, well, I have one message for him. Screw you, ex-boss. Hello, Reddit. I've been a longtime lurker on this social media as it's one of my absolute favorites, but this is my first time posting. I need an outlet to rant and share my story, and I know Reddit is the perfect platform for that. I hope that by sharing my story here, someone might learn something from it. My family won't talk to me as they have finally seen a reason to go no contact with me, and I have even been cut out from the will and inheritance. Even though I wasn't getting much in the first place as my sister is the golden child, I still would have liked something. My husband wants a divorce for betraying him and has currently kicked me out. I'm pregnant, homeless, and living in cheap motels with the little savings I had left that my husband didn't take all these just because I slept with my twin sister's husband and got pregnant. 
I know you're probably wondering how and why I'm in such a horrible state. Let me tell you it's all my fault. I was blinded by jealousy and rage, and then I let these bad emotions fuel my anger. To understand my story and where I'm coming from, let me tell you my story. My name is Lily, and I am a 25-year-old woman. I was married to Devin, a 26-year-old man, but we're currently heading for divorce. I have a twin sister named Lillian, and she is married to Leonard, a 25-year-old man who is also Devin's cousin, crazy I know. I used to work for my dad's law firm until he fired me after the whole issue went down. Devin comes from a wealthy family and so does Leonard, and as I've previously mentioned, they're cousins. As for my twin sister, she's an airhead and barely graduated, so she's a Sam. Now picture a younger me with brown long hair and an average face, and picture my twin sister Lillian with her blonde hair, blue babyish eyes, and a banging figure. The good genes skipped me altogether and went to my twin sister. As a result of that, I grew up looking average as hell, but Lillian grew up looking like a total beauty. It was so bad that people would sometimes not believe that we were twins and would make horrible comments on the difference in our appearances and how I looked so average. People also discriminated against me a lot and Lillian was our parents' favorite golden child. My earliest memories of feeling sidelined and discriminated hit me hard and it happened during our seventh birthday party. It was supposed to be a celebration for both Lillian and me, but it felt like I was invisible and standing in the shadows. As the party unfolded, the gifts kept pouring in for Lillian. Multiple packages adorned with colorful ribbons were handed to her, while I stood there, barely acknowledged. Compliments about Lillian's beauty poured in, and it left me feeling like an afterthought. The most hurtful moment came with the birthday cake. Instead of having both our names on it, the cake only bore Lillian's name. It felt like a deliberate erasure, as if I didn't matter in my own celebration. I'll never forget when we were 10 on Valentine's Day. A boy actually wrote me a love letter and gave me chocolates, something I'd never really experienced before. It should have been a sweet moment, but it turned sour real quick. See, Lillian, my twin, had already gotten a bunch of Valentine's gifts at school, but when we got home, instead of being happy for both of us, she cried to our parents. The heartbreaking part? They took the chocolates from me and gave them to Lillian. I felt the weight of being overlooked all over again. It wasn't just about the chocolates, it was about being treated unfairly, constantly reminded that Lillian's wishes mattered more. It went beyond just losing a simple gift, it hit my sense of worth, making me feel like my experiences counted for less. As the years went on, Lillian just got more selfish and spoiled. It seemed like she couldn't handle seeing me happy. Whenever something good happened to me, she'd throw a fit until it was taken away. There's this one day that sticks out when we were 13, I got my first boyfriend, and even though Lillian had plenty of people interested in her, she rejected them all. Instead, she cried at home, telling our parents she wanted the same boyfriend I had and that I didn't deserve anything good. Things got ridiculous when my parents, probably tired of Lillian's constant demands, made me break up with the boy just to make her happy. It was heartbreaking losing something special not because it was the right thing to do, but to please Lillian's unreasonable wants. Dealing with Lillian's actions left deep scars. It taught me that fairness and kindness sometimes took a back seat in family dynamics. Constantly giving up my happiness for her made me realize I needed to break free from being the overlooked twin. When we hit 16, Lillian's attitude went from bad to worse. I never got a car, but she ended up with two. Whenever I complained, my parents ignored me and put the blame on me, not caring about how unfair it was. Lillian cared a lot about looks, but wasn't exactly a genius. On the other hand, I was pretty smart. When college time rolled around, I got a scholarship to a really good school. Lillian couldn't get into the same top-notch college, and she lost it. She threw a massive fit, crying for hours. She wanted me to give up my scholarship and stay home so she wouldn't feel left out. It was a crazy demand. For the first time ever, I stood up for myself and said no. Our parents tried to talk me into giving up my college spot, but I stuck to my decision. Crazy enough, our parents caved in and bought her a spot at the same college. It was a clear sign of how messed up our family dynamics were. Instead of encouraging Lillian to work hard, they just gave in to her demands, showing that what she wanted mattered more than anything else. That college incident was a big moment for me. It wasn't just about school. It was about figuring out my worth. I learned that I needed to prioritize my dreams over Lillian's whims. It wasn't easy. She cried, argued, and painted me as the bad guy. 
But I held my ground, knowing that my education was a chance to break free from being overshadowed. I started college with the baggage of my past experiences. I understood that breaking free from being the overlooked twin would be a challenge. College became my place to shine, where I rocked my studies and embraced every opportunity. Meanwhile, Lillian was messing up, failing without a care in the world. She knew our rich parents would bail her out, but I didn't have that luxury, as my parents would always choose Lillian over me. This difference fueled growing resentment within me. Lillian flaunted our parents' wealth as her safety net, not caring about the mess she made. It wasn't just about her failing grades, it was the attitude, the entitlement that got on my nerves. While I was deep into my studies, Lillian tried all sorts of things to distract me. Party invites, attempts to monopolize my time, and tantrums when I wouldn't give in. But with the newfound freedom of college, I stood my ground. I refused to let Lillian derail my ambitions. Yet, the resentment lingered. Years of being in Lillian's shadow, making sacrifices for her, had left a mark. College gave me space, but the bitterness was still there. Despite the distance, Lillian's presence loomed over my life. The hate I felt was a result of years of unfair treatment and sacrifices. It wasn't just about her failing grades. It was about the deep sense of unfairness in our relationship. In a weird way, Lillian's attempts to mess with me fueled my determination to succeed. The more she tried to pull me down, the more I clung to my goals. It was my way of rebelling against being the overlooked twin, a refusal to let her control my path. College brought me love too, so I ended up meeting Devin. I wasn't really looking for a relationship, but he was persistent and we ended up falling for each other. Love bloomed and Devin became a big part of my life. When Lillian found out about us, things went crazy. She threw a tantrum and cried to our parents that she wanted Devin. See, Devin came from a wealthy family and was good looking, and Lillian thought I didn't deserve a guy like that. Our parents, used to Lillian's demands, tried to convince me to break up with Devin. It was another example of Lillian's wishes getting priority over my happiness. But this time, I wasn't willing to sacrifice my happiness for Lillian's crazy demands. Lillian, not one to back down, went even crazier. She tried to get Devin's attention, thinking her charm could win him over. But Devin, to Lillian's disappointment, stuck by me and turned down her advances. It showed his loyalty and commitment to our relationship, and I was so proud. Amidst all this drama, I hit a breaking point. I couldn't hold it in any longer, and I spilled to Devin about the years of unfair treatment from Lillian and our parents' selfishness. Growing up in the kind of household I had made me strong and resilient, but I hit a break point and I shared the pain I had been carrying. Devin's reaction was surprising but comforting. Instead of being turned off, he was shocked by what I had gone through. In that moment, he became more than just a boyfriend. He became a solid and supportive presence by my side. His understanding and willingness to stand with me made me love him even more, and I knew I was spending the rest of my life with him. As time went by, Lillian's determination to never back down only got stronger. If she couldn't have Devin, she set her sights on someone just as good, Devin's cousin, Leonard. It seemed like Lillian, driven by envy and the need to prove something, was aiming to get what I had, or even more. I wouldn't be surprised if Lillian snooped around on Devin's social media to find out more about his cousin. Before long, she started dating Leonard, who, not shockingly, also came from a wealthy family. This move really ticked me off. Lillian didn't just stop at pursuing someone similar to Devin. She made a point to rub it in my face, bragging about her conquest and making it crystal clear that she would never let me surpass her in any way. As the years passed, we both graduated from school. I, of course, graduated with flying colors. I continued her education by going to law school and eventually working at our dad's law firm. Lillian, on the other hand, managed to graduate, an accomplishment that seemed impressive given her previous struggles, even if it was just scraping through. Of course, my parents threw her a graduation party, but nothing for me. Devin cheered me up, though, and surprised me with my own graduation party with just our close friends. You should have seen the anger on Lillian's face when she found out I also got a party lol. A year or two after Devin proposed to me, Lillian selfishly and angrily pushed Leonard into proposing to her too. Lillian had this relentless need to compete and outdo me in every aspect of life. It wasn't just about relationships anymore. It was a clear demonstration of her constant desire to overshadow me, making sure she always had what I had and more. The relationships between Lillian, Leonard, Devin, and me became increasingly complicated. 
Lillian's choices seemed to be driven by an insatiable need to one-up me, to ensure she remained in control and on top. Leonard, unfortunately, got caught in the crossfire and was manipulated into becoming a pawn in Lillian's game of comparison and rivalry. I couldn't help but feel a mix of frustration and sympathy for Leonard, who found himself entangled in Lillian's web of jealousy and competition. The relationship between Devon and Leonard morphed into a battleground where Lillian sought victory at any cost. If Devon got a new car, she wanted Leonard to get it too, even when she knew Leonard's family was not as wealthy as Devon's. Lillian's actions messed up not just our relationships, but also screwed with the family bonds we used to have. Our happy moments, like engagements, got messed up because Lillian selfishly wanted to copy everything I did. It wasn't about love or real connections for her. It was all about proving she could be as good as, or even better than, me in every way. Being the one who's always been stuck in Lillian's shadow really stung. The times we should have celebrated together now felt like battles, each one dominated by Lillian's need for attention and triumph. This whole situation was a harsh reminder of how messed up things can get when there's unhealthy competition in a family. Lillian's constant need to show she's better overshadowed the unity that should have held us together. It left me with a mix of feelings, frustration and resentment towards Lillian for her actions and sympathy for Leonard, who got caught in the mess. So I went for a destination wedding and guess what? Lillian decided to copy the whole thing, venue, flowers, and even our vows. I still can't figure out how she managed to snag mine and Devon's vows. It's kind of ironic, you know? My idea of a destination wedding, which was supposed to be a personal choice, turned into Lillian's wedding blueprint. She didn't just take inspiration, she straight up tried to copy every single detail of my special day. Instead of celebrating our uniqueness, Lillian turned it into this weird competition. The whole point of a destination wedding is to make it personal and special, but Lillian's version just felt like a cheap imitation of mine. Hmm. I thought imitation was supposed to be flattering, but in this case, it just felt like she was crossing some boundaries. Lillian not only wanted to copy my choices, but also went as far as taking our intimate vows. It added this awkward layer to what should have been a uniquely personal celebration. So things got pretty messed up when Lillian went too far. She made sure our parents left me with next to nothing in their will. And by little, I mean practically nothing. Here's what happened. Our parents announced they had sorted out their will, but would keep the details secret until they passed away. Lillian, being Lillian, somehow got hold of the will and threw a massive tantrum. In response, our parents caved and revised the will, ensuring I received the absolute minimum. They then had the audacity to call me, apologize, and spill the bitter news. Devin was out of town for work during all this, so I had no one to vent to. Fueled by frustration and a bit too much alcohol, I decided I needed to confront Lillian about this blatant unfairness. I reached Lillian's house, found her out, but her husband Leonard was there. Despite the awkwardness from Lillian's manipulations, Leonard still tried to be friendly whenever he saw me. I asked about Lillian, and he said she was out running errands. That's when a reckless idea hit me. Years of resentment towards Lillian for everything she put me through made me bold. I saw this as a chance to finally get back at her. Fueled by alcohol, I decided to cross a line and sleep with Lillian's husband. I told Leonard to let me in, saying I'd wait for Lillian. In no time, I made my moves and Leonard falling for it ended up in bed with me. Leonard and I started this secret thing, and I gotta admit there was a messed up thrill in getting back at my sister without her having a clue. Leonard at first felt guilty and hesitant, but I managed to talk him into it. We'd sneak into their bedroom, spend hours together, and Lillian wouldn't suspect a thing. Sometimes I'd barely make it out before she showed up. There was this one close call when I saw her car pulling in, so I scrambled to get dressed and told her I'd been waiting in the living room. Cheating on my husband weighed on me big time, but I convinced myself Lillian deserved payback for all the crap she put me through. It turned into this twisted mix of feeling satisfied for outsmarting her and grappling with the guilt of betraying my husband. As the affair kept going, the thrill of revenge clashed with the guilt. And every secret meetup with Leonard added another layer to this messed up web of emotions, blurring the line between revenge and just screwing myself over. Ed Keeping this affair under wraps became a real challenge. Sneaking around, making up excuses, and hoping Lillian wouldn't catch on turned into a daily struggle. What started as a way to get even with Lillian slowly became this web of lies and deceit messing with my head. 
the guilt started to hit hard. What was once this low-key feeling turned into a full-on surge, threatening to drown out any satisfaction from getting back at Lillian. I kept telling myself she deserved this, but that justification was getting shakier by the day, especially as the emotional toll of all the lies and secrets piled up. At one point I had to ask myself, was it really worth it? Was I gaining anything by doing this, or was I just messing up my own morals? The messed up emotions, the lies, and the constant risk of getting caught made me realize that revenge, even if it felt good at first, came with its own cost. A cost that got harder to ignore with each passing day. I My affair with Leonard messed things up between me and Devin big time. It wasn't Devin's fault. He was still his loving self. But the guilt ate at me every time I looked at him, making things feel heavy. Devin noticed the change and thought it was all on him. So he went all out with gifts, spending more time with me, and even cutting back on work trips, thinking it would fix whatever he believed was broken. Little did he know the issue was all in my head and had nothing to do with him. Our physical connection faded away over months, and when I found out I was pregnant, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Shock and fear took over because there was no way the baby could be Devin's. We hadn't been intimate for ages, it had to be Leonard's. It felt like the consequences of my choices were catching up with me. As someone who loves kids, the reality of keeping this baby was a huge, daunting impossibility. With a mix of emotions, I quickly texted Leonard and sent him a pic of the positive pregnancy test, breaking the news. Devin's efforts to fix things only added to the mess and guilt I felt. His attempts to show love and dedication, thinking he was the problem, made everything more complicated. I was dealing with guilt, and I knew there was a storm coming my way as karma and that the storm wouldn't spare Devin from its impact. Funny enough, the storm came quick, sadly. The text I meant for Leonard accidentally landed in Lillian's lap. She went ballistic. Lillian didn't just stop at getting angry. She took screenshots of the text and broadcasted them to everyone. Devin, our parents, friends. My phone went haywire, and if it were a bomb, it would have exploded from all the calls. Turns out Lillian was already suspicious of Leonard cheating, so she snooped through his texts. What she didn't see coming was finding out her husband was cheating with none other than her twin sister. The fallout was like a storm of insults thrown at me from every direction. Even more insane, Devin wasn't even around. He was out of town for work and supposed to return the next day. I only got wind of Lillian sending the screenshots to Devin during her angry text rant. Everything happened so fast that I could barely catch my breath, let alone defend myself. Lillian unleashed a hurricane of consequences and I found myself in the middle of the chaos with no shelter in sight. Defending myself became pointless as accusations flew from every corner. Lillian, fueled by anger and betrayal, didn't hold back in tearing me down. The timing couldn't have been worse. Devin was due to return the next day. How would I explain myself to him about what I had done? The fallout hit me like a ton of bricks. When our parents called, they didn't hold back. They screamed through the phone, asking how I could betray my sister. Frustration bubbled up in me because my phone wouldn't stop buzzing with insults. I lost it on them, airing out everything they'd done to me. But they didn't care. Instead, they dropped the bomb that I was getting cut out of the will, unless I ditched the pregnancy. I stood my ground and they promptly blocked me. Every now and then, they'd unblock me just to repeat their demand, but I refused every time. Devin's reaction was just as harsh. A single text came through, bluntly telling me to clear out of the house by the time he got back the next day. No room for explanations, and he went ice cold, ignoring my calls and texts. Our parents' rejection hurt deep, and Devin's quick decision to cut ties without hearing me out added to the pain. As the sense of loneliness and hopelessness set in, I had to wrap my head around the idea of starting over from scratch. Despite the hurt and feeling abandoned, a stubborn determination kicked in. I stuck to my guns, refusing to compromise my principles even if it meant dealing with isolation and the challenge of being a single parent. I found myself stuck in a real mess. Devin is usually the sweetest guy, but he can turn stone cold when he's pissed. I knew facing him would be a disaster, so I grabbed my stuff and left before he could confront me. I had nowhere to crash. I couldn't turn to my sister or parents, so I ended up in a cheap motel, a far cry from where I used to be. On the way there, I found out Devin had cleaned out our joint account, leaving me with just a fraction of what we once had. Leonard's been radio silent, no word from him, and my dad shut the door on me at his law firm. 
Despite the chaos, I'm sticking to my guns about keeping the baby. Right now, I'm in this motel, teetering on the edge of being homeless if I can't scrape together some cash soon. It's a mess, and I regret every move, especially letting jealousy and anger guide my actions. Devin's not saying much. Besides the initial text booting me out of the house, he only sent another one saying I should have a working phone for him to send someone with divorce papers. It felt like a slap in the face, a brutal reminder of how fast my life switched up. I've begged Devin in multiple messages, pouring my heart out, but he's not biting. His silence makes me feel abandoned. Here I am, stuck in a motel room that feels more like a prison cell dealing with the consequences of my choices. I'm basically homeless, I'm facing the harsh reality of starting from scratch. In quiet moments, regret hits hard for letting jealousy and anger steer me wrong. Lillian's beauty and my insecurities led me down a destructive path, leaving me with wrecked relationships and an uncertain future. Keeping the baby adds another layer of stress to this already messed up situation. I'm dealing with the truth. Actions have consequences beyond what I expected. The road ahead is tough. Either ways, thank you for listening to my story. I know I must face the consequences for what I have done and there's nothing I can do about it. I just hope that by sharing my story on this platform, someone else won't make the same mistake that I did.